What is going on my friends? Hank here from Spruce and Brew Scale Modeling. And I just realized today that I've never actually shared with you guys my full scale model collection, my little stash over here, the Museum of Spruce and Brews. So I figured I'd shoot a quick video and take you guys through my, uh, my full display cabinet here. Um, there's a lot of stuff in here that I built before I was on YouTube uh, and a lot of other kits that never actually made it to YouTube. So I figured it'd be kind of fun to walk through these share with you guys my, uh, my full spread of models here, and uh, hopefully we can have some fun. Um, so ask some questions in the comments below if you see anything uh, that you, you like or you wanna hear more about, and I'm gonna flip the camera around and let's check it out. All right, my friends, so here is my big old display case full of scale models. Um, this beautiful cabinet I actually bought from the previous owners of our home, and I put the lights in myself here was very fortunate to have an opportunity to buy that from the previous owners, and I love this thing. I think it works perfectly for scale models. So today, we're gonna start, uh, we'll just go around clockwise. We'll start on the top here, work our way down, and just do a little uh, overview of all my kits. So first things first, and actually how this is lit, I'll just say, I have these little puck lights that I got on Amazon. Um, hopefully I'm not blinded anybody here, that you can just mount on the top of each of these shelves. All the wiring goes in the back and there is a little remote so you can control the, um, the brightness of the lights and all that jazz. They do a bunch of blinking stuff too, but I don't use that obviously. Um, so here we go. We'll open up the first cabinet and we'll go around the horn here. So on the left, this is my P38G Lightning. This is the Tamiya kit. Um, I built this up as part of Sprue Cutter Model's uh, lightning group build that he did, I think it was last year. Um, I built this up as Rex Barber's mount. Um, he was the man that shot down Admiral Yamamoto's transport plane as part of Operation Vengeance in 1943. Had a blast with this one. Um, this is a beautiful kit from Tamiya. Anyone that's built it before knows that. And I think um, there's a lot of conversation out there. This is a pretty groundbreaking kit. And I had a blast with this one. Um, made this little vignette for it and uh, love this kit. Next to that, this is Tamiya's um, Easy 8 M4A3E8 in the North Korean markings here. Uh, North Korean markings, no, the Korean War markings here. Um, I built this uh, quite a long time ago. I had a blast with this one and it's got that nice devil face on the front there. Tamiya did a good job with those decals. and. Just for fun, I've got um, a Life Miniatures Marilyn Monroe figure up in there from her USO tour to Korea. Um, obviously this, this particular scene didn't happen, but I've just got her up there. Had a fun time painting that one up. It's a great little figure from Life Miniatures over in South Korea. And next to that, I've got my first Armor Division vignette. This I built up as part of the M4 Sherman group build that I hosted back in 2019, 2020. Um, this is the Asuka M4A1 with some figures in there. The tank commander is from Alpine Miniatures. Uh, the bodies of the driver and co-driver are Tamiya bodies with Alpine Miniatures heads. I scratch built this little tree here um, just out of uh, oven baked clay. The, uh, the palm fronds themselves are actually just index cards that I, I painted and cut up and I think they came out pretty good. Um, and then I've got a little mine beware sign here as well. So that's my M4A1 from Asuka, little uh, first armor division vignette. And this kit actually won um, third place in the vignettes category at the scale model show I went to this year. So I was pretty happy about that. Got the little plaque up there for that. All right, moving, doesn't want to stay put. Moving down to the second shelf here, I've got some, uh, some aircraft. In the back left here, this little 172nd scale uh, BF109E, this is actually the first scale model aircraft that I made when I got back into the hobby. I built this probably in 2017, 2018, um, just to kind of dabble into aircraft again. And I had a blast with this one. It's a beautiful little kit, Airfix kit. Um, and I actually recommend this in my top kits for beginners. Um, if you're looking for a quick little aircraft build to get your feet wet in that, um, that practice, highly recommend that one. Down here, I've got a 172nd scale B17F. Um, this is from Academy Models, and I built this one up as Blonde Bomber. 
Uh, I had a blast with this one. This is the last or the most recent uh, B17 that I've built up. I love building B17s. Um, Academy makes a great little 172nd scale one if you're looking for that. Um, it's a great project that's not too, too complicated. There are a ton of aftermarket decals out there, so you can really mix and match what particular aircraft you want to make. And I had a blast weathering this one, doing some different uh, coloration work on the panel lines there and the weathering. Had a blast with that one. And at that same model competition I just went to this past summer, um, this kit took home first place in the 172nd scale multiprop category, which was great. I don't actually have the plaque because they ac I accidentally mixed them, up, mixed them up when I was leaving. I took home the 148 scale uh, multiprop, which was a bummer. And uh, so I don't want to have that out here because confuse people. But yeah, so there's my 172nd B17. And then next to it, you'll recognize this one. Just finished this up. This is my um, Franz Stiegler BF109 G6 that I just made as part of my Great Aces group build with my D-Day Miniatures Studio Franz Stiegler there. Love this kit. My first one at 35 scale aircraft. Had a blast with that. And this little uh, vignette base that it's on, this is actually a 148 scale vignette base um, that actually works really well for just taking pictures and stuff on. So I just have them on here right now and you wouldn't know the difference. So looks pretty good. Moving down to the bottom shelf of this section. This is kind of my uh, late war ETO grouping here. I often mix up, mix and match what um, what like arrangement I have in this display cabinet, but this is my current setup. So in the front here, I've got my M18 Hellcat from Tamiya. The, uh, I've got a few videos up on this one if you haven't seen them already. Um, a build video and a full painting, weathering, decaling video. Love this kit. Great new release from Tamiya. I had a blast with it. And we've got some awesome little stowage bits on there from Value Gear. Nice Alpine Miniatures figure hanging out next to it. Oh, lost focus for a second there. In the back here, this is my um, Cologne 1945 diorama vignette here. I made this years ago um, with this Asuka um, Jumbo, Sherman Jumbo M4A3E2 that I've relatively recently refurbished. I kind of brought it up to my current standards and I'm very happy with it now. I love this tank. Um, I think the Jumbo is a really cool experiment and piece of armored history. So I've got that back here. A couple of uh, Alpine Miniatures figures taken on the scenery here. Oh, and this base, um, this is from Mini Art. It's a Mini Art little vignette um, base that I weathered up and added these bricks and stuff to. And this little sign here, this Welcome to Cologne, I actually ripped this from an actual historical photo and shrunk it down and printed it out and weathered it up. Um, so that Welcome to Cologne, courtesy of the Spearhead Division, is real. You can actually see pictures of that in Cologne. And I've got my little Spearhead patch back there. All right, moving over. Here's my uh, GMC M10 tank destroyer. Gun motor carriage M10. I've got a whole refurb video on this that I will uh, link to in the description below if you haven't seen it yet. Um, I built this kit years ago. This is the Tamiya kit. And I went back and added a bunch of stowage to it, re-weathered it, repainted it, all that jazz. So now I've got a whole bunch of gear on there. And I've currently got my two um, um, Black Panther uh, 751st. Why am I spacing on this? I will correct it. Um, tankers on here. I did a tutorial on how to paint um, darker skin tones. And that is also available on the channel. And I have a Sherman that I'm building up for these guys that's not done yet. So when that is done, they will be going in there. But currently, they're hanging out with my M10. In the back, I've got my EZ8, all loaded down with some logs slung on the side. Bunch of Alpine Miniatures figures in there, doing their thing. Love this kit as well. It's kind of like Fury inspired. Um, you gotta believe that this, this guy back here was kind of modeled off of Brad Pitt's character in that movie. Um, but yeah, I love this, this EZ-8 back here again. This to me is EZ-8. Got a couple of figures hanging out here, including this guy, providing some musical accompaniment. I gotta find a little vignette or something for him. I haven't found a good home for him yet, so he kind of bounces around in here, but I do love that little figure. He's playing the guitar. In front of this, I've got a Stug 3G with an Alpine figure hanging out on that. Um, Again, this was a kit I built years and years ago, and then I revisited it 
Um, I added just scratch built Zimmerit on here. This is just made with paste, with Tamiya paste that I kind of uh, put the texture on and marked up. Hopefully you can see that okay. Just to add like a field applied Zimmerit on there. I think it came out pretty good. I repainted it, added some stowage, um, got some oil barrels on there. MG34, all that jazz. Gotta love a Stug. Then to round out this shelf, we've got my um, Panther G back here, hiding in the back. With some uh, photo etch foliage on here, little uh, field applied camo. And we've got a Tamiya figure, having a quick conversation with this Alpine tank commander. So yeah, that down there is my kind of late war ETO collection. Above that, B-17, BF-109s, and then my little vignettes. And that kind of rounds out my first shelf section here. So we'll close that up, and then we'll head down here. All right, gang, we're going to move down to the bottom right side of the display case here. And this top shelf is kind of my, like, Northeast Europe collection with some weird stuff thrown in there, I guess. I don't know. It's it's kind of a, a mixed bag here. But starting on the left, we've got a Martyr 3, Tamiya Martyr 3, that I also refurbished. You'll notice I've done a lot of refurbished projects. I originally painted this up in just the um, the German gray overall paint scheme, and then I rehit it with a late war tri-color scheme. Nice little uh, tiger or like cheetah print thing on there. I uh, love a Martyr. I love these open top kind of whipped together German vehicles. So I had a blast with that one. Great little kit if you haven't picked that up. In front of that, I got two Alpine guys. This is my um, Winter MG 30 cal team. I've got a full tutorial on how to paint these guys up with the winter jackets, um, the winter coats on the channel. If you want to check that out, some great new releases from Alpine Miniatures there. Moving back, you guys have probably seen this one before. This is my um, uh, Sherman Firefly IC composite with the cast hull in the front and the welded hull in the back. I've got all that hessian tape on there. Had a blast with this one and this model has done very well for me in competition. It just recently won first place in the 135 um, pre-Korea category for armored vehicles at uh, the North Shore Scale Modelers competition, IPMS competition. Very happy about that. And this also won um, Sauerkraut Models virtual group build years ago, I think it was probably 2018, 2019. Um, so very proud of this kit. One of my gems of my collection. Love this. And there's an Alpine um, British tanker in there. This is a kind of a guards armor division, Irish guards scheme here. Got the insignia on the front there. So yeah, love my little Firefly. Moving over, we got a Churchill here. Um, I used this tank. This was, again, this was an old one to kind of explain how to do all these tarps and hessian tape and stuff. So I've got a full two-part tutorial on the channel on how to do all this, just weathering, getting tarps on there, hessian tape, all that stuff. Got the hessian tape on the barrel as well. So that's my Churchill in the back. This um, 105 Sherman, M4A3 105, it's got the 105 millimeter howitzer on there. This is not done. This is like 90% done. I've got the metal def model barrel on there and the def model concrete applique armor on the front. It's kind of in a winter battle of the bulge scheme. I've got some white tarps on there, ton of stowage in the back. And all I need to do now is kind of find a home for this, a little vignette and add some snow elements to it. Um, I, I love this kit. I think it's a really kind of fun story already. I just need to bring it that last couple way across the finish line, last little way across the finish line. And I've got two winter Alpine tankers just hanging out with that. That'll be ready to go when the time comes. And in the back here, this little guy, this little Thompson gunner, this was the first Alpine figure I ever painted up. So I have never revisited him and touched him up or anything because he's just a little, little piece of Spurs and Bruce history. I probably painted him up in like 2017 and I think he looks great. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he's not up to snuff with the rest of my stuff now, but I love him. I think he's just a, a nice milestone. So I keep him in here. Moving over here, this is the Italeri um, M4A2 with the waiting trunks in the back here, waiting stacks. Um, this is a Pacific M4A2. So I've got a little Tamiya figure with an Alpine head in there. It's kind of got the soft cap on. I don't know, just a little nod to 
the weather, just kind of hammer home that it's the Pacific. He probably would be wearing a tanker helmet there. Um, it's got the wooden applique armor on the sides and just kind of did like a lighter dusting on here because it's supposed to be an Iwo Jima tank. So love that there. And then moving forward, this is my um, T26E3 Pershing that I am currently working on. So it's just in here so it doesn't get dusty behind the glass. I've currently painted up the stowage and sprayed it with a gloss coat, but it needs decals and it needs weathering. And stay tuned because you'll see some footage of that for the channel. And then behind that, we've got my Tamiya Jeep all loaded up with value gear stowage, a couple Alpine crewmen in there and some paratroopers, some Alpine paratroopers in their 101st Airborne garb. Great figures there. So yeah, that is my Northeast Europe slash random stuff section. We'll move down here. This little vignette base, I just kind of experimented with, I guess diorama base. Um, I made this, scratch built this thing. This is uh, just insulation foam with various texture and weathering ele elements on here. Um, the wall, like reinforced wall, the wood here, these are just popsicle sticks, like stirring sticks, swizzle sticks that I used for that. Some static grass, nothing too crazy here. And I just kind of put, um, you know, aircraft on here when I'm not super sure what to do with them. At some point I will finish this and kind of turn it into a finished scene. You can see this, you know, exposed foam on there. But currently I've got um, some North Africa BF 109s on there. This is Gustav Rodel's on the right. Werner Schroer's on the left, both from JG-27. And then I've got a JG-54-109 over here. And a little figure hanging out with him. So yep, that's my little uh, airfield diorama that needs to turn into something else. And then down on the bottom, another little mixed bag here. On the left, we've got my um, Battle of Midway diorama here in um, 1700 scale. This is the USS Yorktown and the USS Hammond. And I scratch built this diorama base. It's foam and Mod Podge and just a whole bunch of other little elements there. Um, I'm very happy with how this came out. This is my first um, kind of Navy diorama. Love this little one. I think it came out pretty good. And I added about a billion little figures on there. You can see all the dust and stuff too. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's my Midway Dio. And then over here, this is another old one, oldie but goodie. This is my little Stuart vignette, kind of like a Normandy bocage thing going on here. And got a whole bunch of sandbags on that. That's an aftermarket resin sandbag kit that I would love to try and find again. I'd love to kind of revisit this project and do it again up to snuff with my current skill set. But this is one of my first vignettes I ever made, so it holds a special place in my heart. So yeah, that is the second section. Let's move over to the left here and check out some aircraft. Right, onto our third section of the display shelf here, starting out with some aircraft. Um, this is one of my personal favorites. This is my first um, higher call diorama here. This is depicting a scene from Adam Makos' best-selling novel, A Higher Call. This is Franz Stiegler's BF 109 as he's refueling to go up before that famous encounter with Charlie Brown and Yield Pub. So I've got that here on this little diorama base. Some fun little details there. Ground crew guys doing some work on it. And there's Franz with the ground crewman signing off on the refuel job. So love this, love this little diorama. Holds a special place in my heart. We've got a jug here, P-47, P-47D, Thunderbolt. This is a big old plane, had a blast with this one. Great, great to me a build here. Um, this thing goes together like a breeze and I'm hoping to do another one of these sometime soon. I love building up this P-47. In the front here, um, to me a F-4F Wildcat. I built this up in a buddy build with sprue cutter models. Had a blast with that. And I've got this um, done up as um, Thatch's aircraft from the Battle of Midway. Though I actually realized afterwards it wouldn't have had the drop tanks on it at the time. So, a little anachronistic, but we got them on there. And then in the back, we've got an F-86 Sabre in um, New Jersey Air National Guard markings. 
I did this one up. This is the Italery kit um, for the Cold War Birds group build. That's Brew Cutter Models and Scale Model Canuck hosted earlier this year. Had a blast with that one. A um, little bit of a challenging kit for my tallery. Didn't go together super duper well, but the decals worked well and I'm happy with the finish. So yeah, F86, P47, F4F Wildcat, and my Franz Stiegler BF109 Dio there. Moving down, mixed bag on this shelf. Over on the right, this is to me his classic um, bow fighter, Bristol bow fighter kit in the night fighter markings. Picked up this kit at a thrift shop, thrift shop for like five bucks, which was an absolute steal and had a blast with this. I painted this up years ago. Um, the decals were a little worse for wear and tear. I'd like to build one of these again. It was a fun kit. It went together really well. Um, and it was my first experience with night fighter markings or a paint scheme. So I'd like to give this another go down the road one of these days, but fun project all the same. All right, moving over here. This is my Tamiya M48 Patton um, from the Vietnam War. Got some uh, Black Dog, I believe it's Black Dog figures on there, resin figures on there, holding down the fort. Had a blast with this one. This is a refurb as well. This is a very old Tamiya kit, classic Tamiya kit. So I added some um, cast texture marks on there and I've repainted and weathered this a couple of times. I'd like to put it in a Diorama of some sorts one of these days, but had a blast with that one. And then over on the left here, this is the Academy Merkava 2D. Um, beautiful kit, and it's kind of the first, or like the only like proper modern tank kit that I've done. Um, we've got the anti-slip paste on here, all loaded up with MGs and stuff, the way the IDF does. And this kit actually brought home first place for um, post-Korean War 135 scale armored vehicles at the IPMS show I competed at this year. So very happy about that. And then down on the bottom here, this is kind of my like uh, work in progress or stuff that needs to be revisited shelf. Um, well, a whole bunch of stuff down here. This is a classic to me, a Corsair that I did a while back um, when I was kind of getting up to speed with aircraft models. Um, over here, another FW190, again, kind of practicing my skills, one of my earlier ones down here. Then in the back, a bunch of some of the first kits that I made um, when I was getting into the hobby. A couple of basic uh, Tamiya Shermans over there. A lot of these I painted either by hand or with a rattle can, um, like spray painted, and then brushed all the details by hand. Uh, Tamiya T34, Deuce and a Half truck, um, a Char B1. Uh, I believe this is Academy's M113 uh, troop carrier and to me is T62 kit. And then, as I mentioned earlier, these are the plaques that I accidentally mixed up. So at this competition, I won 148 scale single engine um, for an aircraft you'll see in a bit and 172nd multi-prop and they mixed up the scales. So I've got these down here and hopefully I can swap those out with those guys one of these days. So yeah, that is the third section here. Got some aircraft, some armor, and some uh, oldie goldies that I'd like to revisit and maybe spruce up one of these days. So let's move on to the last section. All right, my friends, on to the final section of the display cabinet here. So down here, we've got a bunch of 148 scale German aircraft, uh, BF 109E4, belonging to Adolf Galland. Got his figure here, mustache, cigar, and everything. Had a blast with this one. This was one of the first BF 109s that I knocked out. I was like, yep, did a good job with that. Really proud of that one. Um, it's a cool paint scheme, iconic Mickey Mouse logo on there and everything. So happy with that one. Sorry for the focus there. In the back, this is to me is um, BF 109 G6, a 148 scale. I did this up as um, Johannes Steinhoff's mount from his time leading JG 77 in Italy. Got the extra cowlings in the back there. I've currently got it displayed with the engine visible and Steinhoff himself hanging out with it. These are on display bases because I competed them recently. This one did not take anything home, but this guy, my um, Eric Hartman BF109, actually won first place in the 148 scale um, prop category. So I was very happy about that. These decals were super tough. I've got a whole video on how I painted and weathered and decaled this one up. We've got Eric Hartman in the front there as well. So yeah, 
I've got a couple of, well, three Tamiya BF109s here. I have one more BF109 E3 um, belonging to Werner Molders that is actually over on the workstation. It's in its own little cabinet. Um, so that's over there, but it's usually right here. And then I've got my ME262 in this kind of very late war, uh, rushed out of the factory scheme. You've got some bare metal visible there. Um, paint just barely sprayed over it. It's already chipping off. You can see the uh, bare aluminum underneath that. Had a fun kind of concept build with this one. Late war leather flight suit pilot there. And this one took home first place in the 148 scale jets category at that same model show. So I was very proud of that. Um, apparently, one of the judges mentioned to me that this one was in the running for best in show, but got nudged out. So kind of cool um, either way. So I was very proud of that. Love this ME262. Moving up here. This is kind of my eastern front section. So left to right, we've got Tamiya's um, Panzer III here. This is the new Alpine um, MG42 gunner that I just painted up. Tutorial on that on the channel. Some Tamiya Wehrmacht figures hanging out with the tanks there. Tiger One in the back in the winter scheme. Um, SDKFZ 222 Armored Scout car, also from Tamiya. Some nice photo etched metal parts on the top there. Alpine figure hanging out. This one I would like to revisit because the weathering job is not fantastic and I'd like to do something cool with that. It's a neat little vehicle. So, I have to do that one of these days. Uh, Academy T34 um, 85 in the back there in some winter scheme. Got this one all mucked up with mud and snow and all that jazz. Kind of a test bed for me to practice um, winter camo on this. This this used to have the like Battle of Berlin bed spring armor on it, um, but I built it years and years ago and I wasn't super happy with it. So I took the bed springs off and I weathered it up in this snow camo. Some more Tamiya figures here. Um, this is my uh, Panther D back here. This was one of the first armor kits that I built up and was really, really proud of. I was happy about my skills progressing. This is from probably 2017, 2018. Got some Alpine figures in there in that nice Eastern Front early tricolor camouflage. And then rounding that up, got an Alpine infantry figure here. And to me is Martyr 1, just in the old school German gray camo. So that is my little Eastern Front section here. Oh, and a pack 36, of course, for good measure. And then up on the top here, this is kind of a weird little out of sight, out of mind section in the back here. You can't see it when you're standing in front of the cabinet, but when I hold the camera up, you can see them pretty well. But not, not everything in here. Um, in the front, I've got another 172nd scale B-17. This is a knockout dropper. Had a blast with this one. Um, in the early days of my Instagram channel, or Instagram account, Instagram account, I painted that one up, had a blast with it. Um, a TIE Advance, Bandai TIE Advance in 172nd scale. There's a video on the channel about how to build and paint this one up as well. Darth Vader's in there somewhere. Probably can't see him, but he is in there. And then an unpainted Tamiya Wehrmacht figure. I've done four out of the five. They're all down here. Let's see, where are they? One, two, three, and the fourth one, I think, is somewhere else. But I gotta paint up their buddy over here, so one of these days. And in the back, it's just kind of a funny little graveyard of stuff um, that I need to finish. This is a M32, M32, I think. Um, vehicle recovery, armored recovery vehicle from my Tallery that I've got to finish. Got a 135 scale Kubelwagen, a 172nd scale F86 Saber that for some reason I didn't finish decaling. Old school Tamiya Panzer II. And then this guy in the back, this is the first scale model kit that I did when I got back into the hobby in 2016, 2017. Um, this is the old Revel kit, I believe. I painted it by hand. I just picked it up on a whim. And this is what started it all. So kind of a fun place to finish the tour today. I keep that back there just as a reminder. I don't know why it's so dinged up right now. 
uh, the barrels missing and well, the barrels in the back there, but, uh, that is what started it all. That Panzer IV. So you have that one to blame for all of this mess that we have now. <laughs> all right, guys. So that is the tour of the Spruz and Brews scale modeling museum here, so to speak. That's my, uh, my collection to date as of November, 2022. So let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see any more information or talk or have me talk any more about any of these kits. Um, if you got any questions, comments, whatever, let me know. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, fun little thrown together video here just to share some behind the scenes action with you guys. So yeah, until next time, my friends, be well, happy building. Cheers.